On the GED science test, what happens if they give you an equation like this one here, but they don't give you numbers to plug into it? What do we do then? Well, let's see. Human impact on the environment can be modeled by this equation. And then they tell us what all the letters stand for. Based on this equation, which changes will result in a decreased environmental impact? Let's highlight that. This is the thing we're trying to find. How can this happen? Well, they tell us environmental impact. That's the letter I right here. And again, we want it to decrease or go down in value. So let's show that. So the question is, what needs to happen to this fraction for the whole thing to decrease? Well, one way to find that out is just to make up some numbers. Let's say these two things multiply to 10 and the bottom has a value of two. Then we get 10 divided by 2, 5. So that tells us the environmental impact initially here is at a level 5. OK, but how can we make it decrease? Well, there's two ways to make a fraction decrease. One of them is just to make the top number smaller. If we make this number bump down a little bit to an 8, then we get 8 divided by 2, and that gives us 4. So sure enough, by making the top number smaller, that does result in an overall decrease here, and that's what we want. But the other thing that works, it's a little tricky, it's to make the bottom number bigger. So if we do 10 and then bump this up, let's say to a five, let's go ahead and show that. By making this bottom number bigger, 10 divided by five, we get two. And then that does also result in an overall decrease as well. Next, we want to find which answers talk about both of these things happening. Either N or C becoming smaller, and T becoming bigger. But the one that does that is the third option. Talks about decreasing consumption. That's what C stands for. We want that to decrease. That's correct. And it talks about increasing technology, or that value of T going up and increasing. And both of those things happening, it's going to result in the whole fraction becoming smaller or result in a decreased environmental impact. So that's it. Just by coming up with some numbers ahead of time and then manipulating them, seeing what happens when you change them, then you can find out what needs to occur for a whole function to decrease here. Okay, let's check out another one. Feel free to pause and try this one on your own here. This time we have a pressure on a gas can be determined with this formula. Now, these are all next to each other. It's the same thing as them being multiplied. So it's still the same concept. They tell us the letters based on this equation, which changes would result in an increase in pressure on a gas. This is the thing we're trying to find. Now pressure is P, we want it to increase this time. But if we go back, Whatever you want the whole thing to do is what you want the top to do. It's only the bottom that's going to do the opposite. So let's use that idea here. We want this to go up. We want the top numbers to go up as well. But the bottom, we want that to do the opposite or to go down in value. But let's check that that works. Once again, let's say the tops multiply to 10. The bottom value is 2. 10 divided by 2, we start off with a pressure of 5 to begin with. But this time, we want the whole thing to increase. Let's make the top number a little bigger. We'll go from 10 up to a 12 this time. Then 12 divided by 2, we get 6. So by making the top value bigger, it does result in an overall increase here. Okay, or let's go ahead and keep 10, but then we'll shrink this number down. We'll call it a 1 instead. So the second thing, we get 10 divided by 1, and that just keeps it 10. And that also results in an increase as well. So that's it. For this fraction to increase, we want any of these values to go up and this value to go down. And this time, the last one has it. It talks about increasing temperature. That's T going up right there. That's what we want. And decreasing volume, or that bottom number becoming smaller. So as long as you know how to manipulate fractions like this, 
You can find out when something's increasing or when something's decreasing without any problem here. Here's a video with more GD science problems for experiments here. Check out my website for practice problems, just like these and others as well. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles!